All right. All right. Cool. What's going on, guys? Can you guys hear me? No. Oh. All right. Cool. I'm Austin Parisu over here. And no, I'm Robert Parker. And uh, we're both the founders of a company called Gas Money. Um, not to sound cheesy or anything, but just to say, you know, this is basically a presentation to, I don't know if some of you already have a business or are interested in entrepreneurship. Actually, just let me get a raise of hands. I know it's early, but who's at least interested in business? And okay, cool. Who has a business maybe? Oh shit, okay, cool, good job. Anyway. What I want to get down to is what we're trying to do is inspire you guys a little bit to just, you know, go for it because it sounds like you're already going for it, man. I'm back there. And if I missed anybody, I'm sorry. But what you guys got to do is just really step forward and make it happen because this is the best time that you can do it. So you're probably wondering why we're, why we're here today. We can get the clicker going. Well, basically, we're just like talking about our story. Um, we have a business we work on called Gas Money. And we're going to kind of go over basically like first introduce ourselves, tell you guys about our business, tell you how we got to where we are today. Um, and then the majority of the presentation is not about us like trying to sell our business to you. Um, we're basically using our business as credibility to try and inspire you guys. Um, we're by no means very successful or anything right now. Um, we're just on the come up trying to start a startup. Um, and what we're going to focus on is the five lessons we've kind of learned in our journey so far that we think could help you guys out. Um, and even if like one out of those five lessons sticks with you, that's our goal today is just help try and inspire you guys. And um, at the end, we're going to open up a Q&A. If you guys have personal questions, questions about the business, questions about a point we talk about, um, feel free to ask us. And then on the way out too, we have business cards if you want to grab any of those and uh, connect with us further. So just kind of give a little introduction. Uh, that's a picture from probably like five, six years ago. Yep. Um, that was when Austin and I first met. We basically met at Davidson High School. Um, we graduated in 2019, 2020, so we're pretty much your guys' age. Uh, I'm 20, he's 21. And uh, basically, we met as doubles partners on the tennis team. So um, we were not good at all at the time. Like, we just picked up a racket. Um, they basically, the only reason we made the varsity tennis team is because they had two open spots and they needed people to play. So um, it kind of worked out for a reason because, obviously, if we wouldn't have met on the tennis team, who knows if we would have met at all? Um, who knows if we would have had a business together? And um, basically, like, how we got Gas Money started is we wanted a job without a boss. Um, he was really focused on tennis. I was really focused on academics. I'm sure a lot of you can also relate. Like, a lot of jobs that high schoolers typically do are pretty time-oriented, where you have a schedule that you have to follow based on your manager or your boss. So we ended up starting a lawn care business, just the two of us, because with a lawn care business, you can set your own schedule, set your own rates. And that was kind of our first introduction to the business world and having a job as our own boss pretty much. So now just to kind of, he gave you a little bit of backstory and just to show where we're at today, um, we've been able to develop a platform basically for young adults, uh, high school and college age between 16 and 24 that can go on there almost like an Uber or DoorDash and offer services to their local communities and connect with clients in their local communities. Um, so that's what we've come to today. And basically our biggest promotion of our company is trying to promote and expose business and entrepreneurship to people uh, from a young age because what it really does it doesn't even uh, you know matter if you go into a business or anything like that but if you're exposed to that it shows you that there's not a set pathway in life and there's no cookie cutter way to life you know you don't have to uh, do basically what, what what grandpa tells you to do at the dinner table you know Get, get into a good college, uh, find a girlfriend, find a boyfriend at college, have a kid, have a family, and then work a nine to five till you're 40 or 50. Um, and that's that cookie cutter mentality. And what business and entrepreneurship does show people that we were able to expose ourselves to almost on accident by starting a business um, in high school, it showed us that there is a plenty of pathways and you can make your own pathway for life. And just a little bit more about it, um, what this shows is a contractor profile. So, you know, let's say, I mean, I'm even signed up, Rob signed up, and uh, we've used this app plenty of times because that's another thing about business. Um, we were able to build a piece of technology that we wanted to use because we couldn't find anything out there like it. And that's, that's where a lot of the passion comes in, which we'll talk a lot about in this uh, presentation. But what these are, these are the service offerings, just to give you an idea, um, you know, lawn mowing, landscaping, leaf removal, uh, technology service, helping an older person figure out why they can't log into their damn computer. And, you know, doing all of those things are simple services, but 
anybody at this age can do that. And that's that's what uh, niche, I guess, that you probably have learned that terminology in this class um, that we're focused on. Yeah, yeah just to touch, uh, touch the board, it should work, but the technology part of it. <laughs> it's, oh, it's, yeah, I don't know. I'll just find first hour and then bring it. Oh, look, look at us. Tiny hood. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Ken. And that leads to our mission, which is basically why we're here today. So we want to inspire you guys, obviously, but also like our company mission is to provide young adults the opportunity to be their own boss so you can develop skills in leadership, communication, accountability, just kind of all the things you learn through owning a business, um, doing an entrepreneurship venture. And another thing to mention too, like if you guys aren't focused fully on business or entrepreneurship, that's fine. Like if you wanna go into the military, if you wanna start a career, um, even if you wanted to go into like some like weird job that nobody knows about, like that's totally fine. Our points I think can apply to pretty much any career, anything you wanna do in life. So that's another thing too, like, if you're not an entrepreneur, like we still think you guys can get value from this presentation and we hope you can. So now really back to the beginning of, of the company, just to give you an idea of the story, um, we're pretty much just going to brush on the company in general and the rest is going to be about the lessons that we learned from it. Um, and in the Q&A, you guys can ask us any questions about the company if you have. But anyway, this is our original brochure. Uh, we sat down and we were like, okay, we have you know, no time to have a job every single day and a set schedule. So let's sit down, let's figure out what services and experience we know how to do. And then we're confident enough to offer to the community and what equipment do we have? And obviously we were in high school and even still now, you know, looking through your parents' garage and finding a rake or a lawnmower or a shovel, or, um, you know, even just talking to your parents about certain things and learning from them so that you can offer a potential service. And that's exactly what we did. We made a list of the services that we were confident enough to offer. Uh, you know, this was just a Google Doc printed it out, made some small business cards, took some very cringy pictures, and we went door knocking. And basically, that I mean, door to door sales and selling in general, if you can learn how to do that from a young age, you can conquer the world. I mean, you can sell anything you want, and that can really help you in business and just life in general and having conversations. And so, handing out the flyers, we realized from a lot of the clients that when we were doing the services, they just love seeing young people work. I mean, it wasn't that we were providing a premium service or getting the job done exactly the way that they wanted it to, uh, to be done, but we were getting it done, we were working hard, and we were showing that we were motivated and wanting to make change. And the biggest thing that we got from the clients is that they saw you know, the younger generation in us that they, they, they gave them faith basically on the younger generation because i don't know if you guys have had conversations with you know people that are older than you or just kind of felt that thought that people are thinking about you as that stigma that's kind of on our age you know if they're lazy there's the technology they just want to sit on their computers all day but what we're trying to do is promote you know with conversations like these and with our company in general that we can prove ourselves we're not you know just people that are going to be lazy and want to sit on our ass all day so it's just showing that and you can do that with your own company or with your own motivations in life you just have to go for it so now that you guys know about our company um, we're gonna get into the lessons and that's why we're here today is to help you guys kind of give insights from our journey that could help you so the first lesson uh, arguably one of the most important ones is don't be afraid to ask for help so whether you're starting a business or you're going into career into your career the best people to talk to are people that have gone through exactly what you're going through and have made mistakes that you can learn from so you don't have to make those mistakes on your own. So just to kind of start out, like a conversation goes a long way. You guys are in high school, um, you have access to all the teachers here, you have access to professionals um, that can help out, like start conversations with these people, especially if you're looking to go on a career that this person's in or if somebody started a business that you also have a similar business idea for. So basically like when we started out, we did our best to just reach out to everybody we could think of, like business teachers, professionals, um, even other business owners. And like that helped us get started so much quicker than if we would have just done Google searches and everything because um, the internet's like a crazy place and there's oftentimes so much information that it can be difficult to know like what's best for your situation. And um, another example that I gave, I think in another speech we did, was like reading books and stuff is an awesome way to learn. But the one thing that books and internet don't have is a curated advice set for yourself in your own situation. 
So when you talk to somebody, they think of all the experiences they've had and recall all the mistakes that they've made, and they can figure out how to actually apply it directly to your personal situation. So um, you almost get that customized advice that you don't normally get through the internet or through books. Um, so that's one of the best lessons that we can offer is don't be afraid to ask for help, start conversations, and you never know where a connection is going to go. And with those connections, you got to find mentors. I mean, in, in a mentor doesn't have to, there's, doesn't have to be a name on it. Like, oh, will you be my mentor? Kind of like you're asking them to go out with you. It's not like that. It's a connection that you gain from a conversation and it goes forward. And you, you have some type of relationship where you can reach out to them with a question and, um, you know, just try to get a quick response in an honest response. We found that the best connections and mentors are the ones that are the most transparent and honestly, there's just, and excuse my language, but there's just no bullshit with the situation. They just won't bullshit you. They won't give you certain ideas that is basically just patting you on the back, even though there might be a situation where they could help you and, and tell you certain things that um, will sound negative at the time, but those conversations help you move forward because you might not have thought of that. And it's just them exposing that to you. And that's how powerful a mentor is. Even uh, just an example from our history, uh, I have an aunt, I actually have a pretty big family. I think I have about 80 or 90 like immediate family members. And I have one, one of my aunts, one of my dad's sisters, he uh, or she is in a corporation. And basically just that's all I knew at the time. I was like, oh, okay, she's in business, whatever. And that was the only person that was in some type of executive position in a business that I thought knew a lot about things. So I was like, you know what? I don't have a relationship really with this person. It's just, you know, high by at family events, but I reached out and we're going to actually talk about that. Not having the fear of reaching out can really help you move forward because you're going to get a lot of responses from these people that you're, you're nervous or scared to reach out to or intimidated by that you're, you didn't need to have those feelings at all once you do it because they're going to be so helpful for you. And what she did, she was able to walk us through our entire process of how to start our LLC uh, what you need to do to pay taxes and everything that we could have learned online. But like Rob said, there's so much on there and it gets so intimidating. Like, you know, some of the things you can't even believe or they're outdated. So the best uh, kind of knowledge you can gain is from other people's experiences. And a lot of times it's from mentorship. And kind of going off of that point, um, whatever you want to do in life, do what you're passionate about. And um, this is a great picture out of the creator and Nardwar. Uh, both of them are really funny. They enjoy what they do. Uh, at least you can tell in the picture they're happy. And um, like whether it's a business idea, a career, something that you want to do in life, whatever it is, like you have to enjoy it deep down. Because if you're just going for the money or you're just doing it because your peers are doing it or because your parents want to do it, then you're not ultimately going to be happy. And that's another thing. Like. Um, when I was growing up, I was fortunate enough that my parents would support me in kind of anything that I wanted to do in life. Um, my original plan was to become an actuary. And um, if you, for, those of you, for those of you that don't know, that's basically like a business analyst um, that analyzes statistics, um, stuff like that for insurance companies. Um, it's a pretty demanding career, uh, but it also pays really well. And for me in high school, that was like my mind was set on that. My parents were like supporting me fully. And then I'm at Austin. We had the idea for gas money. And I kind of had this dilemma, like, do I want to go forward with the actuarial science and leave gas money in the past? Or do I want to take the risk and go for gas money and do something that I'm really passionate about? And that was a tough call at the time because I was giving up a guaranteed salary. Um, I knew I'd be making like 90, 100K a year um, in order to go for an idea that there's a pretty big chance it might not succeed. But having that passion and having that gut feeling that this is what I want to do with my life really feels a lot more fulfilling and um, that leads to the next point it's never felt like work to us like we worked a ton uh, we do a lot of work like during the day when we started out we do lawns all day come home at like 6 p.m um get our homework done and then after that like go and grind and start making the app and everything and that's like a pretty involved process and as an employee if you're working for a company that's generally not something that you'd enjoy doing is finishing work and then going home and doing more work but as a business owner if you're really passionate about what you do doesn't even feel like work it just feels like second nature just to get on the grind and keep working at it and then um finally like find happiness first the money will follow like me and him like we're not rich at all from this like you guys probably have more money than us right now we put everything that we've made back into the company and um we kind of like live below our means and everything and the reason we do that is just because we're so confident in this idea like 
we're willing to live below our means and not make money from it right now because we're so confident in the, that in the future, there's that chance that it could go nationwide, it could go worldwide, um, it could blow up in some form or manner. And even if this idea doesn't succeed, it could also lead us to new ideas and new ventures. And um, the more ventures you have, the better chance of success you'll have. So um, just do what you're passionate about. Yes, exactly. And um, this is going to go a lot with also the uh, the next slide after this. But lesson three, think and be different. Um, you guys are just engulfed with thoughts right now uh, through this time in your life, especially in high school. It's like, I mean, it's it's thinking, oh, you know, should I wear this to school? Should I wear these shoes to school? It, does this girl like me? Does this guy like me? All that stuff. But it's like when it really comes down to it, sometimes like all of these people did, you know, Danny Duncan, Cole Bennett, Steve Jobs and Mike Tyson. That's a badass picture, too. But anyway, it comes down to these people went left when everybody went right. And it doesn't matter like when you do that, but it, it just matters that you do it because there's going to be so many situations, especially right now in your life that, you know, everybody's kind of trying to do the same thing, uh, you know, feels like they're interested in the same thing, but that's just because you're all surrounded by it all the time. But if you really like come to terms with yourself and figure out like what's going to make me happy, like the last slide, and how can I fulfill myself in my life and basically live life with no regrets, you just got to go for whatever you would regret not going for. Um, another thing is dream big. I mean, there's literally no such thing as, I mean, even a goal too small or a goal too big. What matters is that you have a goal and or goals. And so you can set those steps in, in, you know, whatever you think the pattern would be to get to that goal. And even if you don't reach it, you know, a lot of times you're going to fail. You're not going to reach that specific goal, but you're going to learn so many things down the line. And a quote, um, I don't even know who said it, but what happens when you fail, you don't start from nothing. You start from experience. You've learned so many things down the line and no matter if you fail or not, you gotta just keep going because you've learned so many things, then why not then put, put all of that knowledge and all of that experience into the next thing and it might work out for you. Exactly, and uh, kind of going off that slide, uh, one thing that we talk about a lot is the high school mindset. And whether you guys have it or not, it's basically that idea that you have to do what your peers want you to do for the fear of getting judged. And personally, like in high school, I was always that kid who was like, wear the same thing everybody else did, kind of didn't stray from the norm that much. Um, I was always worried about judgment. And looking back, like that was such a waste of time. Like nobody really cares that much about what you're doing. And if they do, like, they're, like that's just kind of weird. Like nobody's really paying attention to you as much as you think they are. And a big thing like to kind of branch off of that towards entrepreneurship is if you have a business idea, and one of your peers says like, oh, that's kind of stupid. Like it's not going to work. You got to ignore that because if you truly believe in it, like you are the one who's going to bring that business idea to light. And another thing we like to say is like haters, you almost have to love them. Um, I mean, there's going to be haters in everything you do, whether you go into a career or start a business. Um, one thing that we've kind of used haters as is motivation because there's no better feeling than um, it's not really revenge, but succeeding, um, believing in something that nobody else believed in and then kind of showing like, look, you didn't believe in us, but look how we made it. And um, that's just like one of our motivations for success is to be able to prove people wrong who didn't believe in us and kind of show that um, if you believe in a vision, you can accomplish it. And kind of going back to the last slide, um, you don't have to go back, but Cole Bennett, he was in the top left or the top right. Um, for those that don't know, he basically has a media company called Lyrical Lemonade. Um, he makes music videos for huge rappers. Um, he's worked with Juice World, Eminem, um, a ton of different people, Ski Mask the Slump God. And basically, like when he started out, he first got the idea when he was a teenager. And what he do is when he was in high school, um, he was basically working on his business on the side. So after school, he'd go out and record for local song club rappers. He grew up right outside of Chicago. So he had a ton of like small connections in that underground rap scene. And what he'd do is when he was at high school, he kind of sketch when he was trying to come up with an idea for a company. He would sketch a bunch of logos at his desk and like sometimes his peers would look over and go like, dude, like, what are you doing? Um, Lyric Lemonade is a stupid name. Like, you should come up with something else. Like, I don't even think this company is going to succeed. And basically, like, what he did is he blocked out all of that negative energy. And he actually has a TED talk where he talks about a story. It's called, I think it's called Mindset is Everything. It's like 20 minutes. Uh, if you're interested in Cole Bennett or want to learn more, like, definitely go watch it. Um, but basically, he stuck with that vision. And uh, once he got to college, he ended up connecting with a ton of huge rappers um, who at the time weren't that big, like, most notably Lil Uzi Burt. He actually booked Lil Uzi for a music video for eight thousand dollars, and at the time, um, yeah, that kind of seems like a lot of money. But for Lil Uzi, like how much he's blown up, 
like Paul Bennett was one of the key factors and earliest people to work with Lil Uzi before he blew up. And like just the fact that he was able to work with him before he got big. And now like both of them kind of grew together is huge. And at the time, like nobody really saw that other than Paul and his close friends inner circle and his mom. And basically one last thing to talk about on that high school mindset of thing is uh, make sure you have a good inner circle. And what I mean by that is choose your friends carefully because the people you surround yourself with are the people who you become the most like. So if you're hanging out with people who don't believe in what you're doing or who don't think it's good to go for your goals, like you got to find new friends. And that's kind of something I learned in high school. Um, you just want to surround yourself with positivity because um, if you surround yourself with negative energy, then you're not going to become as motivated. You're not going to be as successful. This is probably one of my favorite slides. Uh, lesson four, failure is a part of success. And that might sound kind of weird because, you know, why is failure one of my favorite things? And I, th I think there's actually a quote, uh, you have to fall in love with failure to enjoy the success. And that's because failure happens so many times down that journey, down that path that you're gonna take. Because if you really go for something, if you really jump in, not just, you know, dip your toes in, you gotta jump in and you're going to not always have the right answer. Um, my definition of failure is not having the right answer to the current problem at hand. And you can always find a different way to solve that, you know, like a math test. I mean, I never did very good in math, but I would always try to, you know, basically just go in my head and find certain ways to answer a problem. And sometimes it would work, or sometimes I would just get one credit point because I had so much shit written down on my piece of paper. But anyway, it goes back to how much failure can show you uh, what to improve on. And it can show you, you know, maybe this didn't work, so I'm gonna try this. And maybe you'll fail again, fail again, fail again. Um, actually, Bill Gates, uh, I was watching one of his things. He's the, or was the CEO of Microsoft, one of the founders, and he went through over a thousand investor meetings, over a thousand, like different people. And it came down to the last, I think he said like 20 people actually made Microsoft happen out of a thousand. So it, it comes down to sometimes failing that many times and getting that many no's and being consistent and persistent to your total vision. Um, just to explain these pictures a little bit, I don't know if you guys have seen this clip at all of Elon Musk. Uh, during his Tesla launch for, or not, not necessarily the launch, but he was just showing off the um, Cybertruck. And what he said, he was like, yeah, these windows, this is like the, the most upgraded version. They're gonna be shatterproof and bulletproof. And so he had one of his assistants come up and he had like, it was almost like a, uh, what are those, what's that sport? And it's like that, that metal ball. Shot put. Shot put. Yeah, it was like a shot put ball. And the guy just, I mean, Elon was even so confident and going to this point, he didn't have the fear of failure at the time because he was so confident in his product and his vision that he said, put you back into it. Like he told this guy to throw the thing. So he threw it and it hit right there, nearly shattered it, threw it again, basically shattered the whole thing. That doesn't look like bulletproof or shatterproof to me. And he had to take that failure in front of thousands of people and now millions of people that have seen it. But what can be taken from that, like you uh, referenced, um, the amount of marketing that you get, I mean, it's almost like a win from a failure. Like thousands and millions of people have seen now and know what Tesla is, know who he is, and he was able to then figure out, let's take a new path of action. If since that one path of action didn't work, let's go back to the drawing board, let's figure out a new thing. And that's, that's a huge part of entrepreneurship is trying to figure out different ways to get to that that vision and that goal in the end. And that leads to the next slide, which is a standalone quote, which is no mistakes in life ever, it's only lessons. Um, Big Sean said that. That's actually my senior quote too. Um, it really stuck with me because I see this as more of a mindset thing. And mindset is something that's huge to have as an entrepreneur because basically you have to teach yourself to overcome failure by seeing it as an opportunity for success. So what I mean by that is anytime you make a mistake, there's always something you can learn from it, whether you fail a test and figure out what problems you did wrong, or you start a business and don't gain any traction. Like there's always a learning opportunity in everything that you do. 
And having the right mindset and viewing those mistakes as opportunities for lessons instead of viewing them as failures is huge because if you think of them as mistakes, I mean, there's no time machine. You can't go back and change that mistake. So if you dwell on a mistake that you make in the past, it's doing nothing for you but keeping you in the past and keeping you from growing. So one of the best things you can do as a business owner or in your career, or whatever you want to do in life, is learn from your mistakes because we're all human. Like We're going to make mistakes, some of them bigger than the others. Um, but as long as you learn from them and actively try and find a way to see an opportunity for success through that mistake, um, it's going to help you so much in life. And that just comes down to being positive, having a good mindset, and really just manifesting more success from your failures. And it uh, just goes both ways. And on to, I believe, the last lesson. Uh, lesson five, your mindset determines your future. And, I mean, talk about legacy. Like, we can still figure out who this guy is and i don't even know how long ago he died but albert einstein one of the biggest thinkers you know came up with so many different theories and all that stuff probably businesses as well but business was a lot different back then i bet but it comes down to having that clear vision and what this guy did was able to think and visualize exactly what he wanted his life to look like a product to look like a theory uh you know to look like and how he was going to prove it and what you're able what you can do and what we do all the time is, you know, before bed or, you know, you're just sitting there and, and just close your eyes and like visualize what you want your life to be like and how you're going to get there. And we think we have all these conversations about your mind being a magnet. I mean, we, we, we've seen it so many times where, you know, we'll, we'll have these astronomical goals that we think, you know, even like launching an app and uh, basically getting to where we are today. We talked about and visualized about two years ago and went through that entire process and now we're here today so it's it's just basically figuring out how you can uh it's only going to work for you you know it doesn't work for everybody um the same thing that's going to work for you it just comes down to doing it and having that positive mindset on what you can do in life and the next thing i mean going into business or you guys just getting out of high school there's gonna be a lot of stress there's gonna be a lot of decisions you're gonna have to make and there's gonna be a lot of stress that comes with that so it's figuring out a way that you can manage that stress because your mental health, I mean, it's basically like your stamina for life. If you're able to have really good stamina, you're going to go a long way, but, and, and you're going to do a lot of things. But if you don't have a way to manage that and it takes over you, you're going to implode and you're not going to be able to go as far as you can. And as far as your potential, uh, you know, can be, can be let out into the world. And the last thing, the way to be able to show the, the world that that potential and to go for your dreams is to have the confidence. And I like to say there's a very fine line between confidence and arrogance. Arrogance is essentially, you know, you being almost overly confident and flaunting a certain thing that you did or thing that you created when realistically you're making it look like way, it's way bigger than what it actually is. Whereas confidence, it's proving something with facts and getting certain, certain things done and just being confident with what you have and being happy with what you have and showing the world. And essentially, if you're able to be confident with a product or a service, you can really show the world that it's it's gonna make, you know, change in somebody's life. And to kind of just wrap up this slide, um, one last thing that you guys take away from this is to dream big. Um, the bigger your goals are, the more motivation you're gonna have and the more action you're gonna take to accomplish those goals. And if you set really large goals for yourself, like one of our goals is to get gas money nationwide. And that's a huge goal. Like that's probably going to take um, years of dedication, years of passion. But eventually, if we reach that goal, um, along the way, we're going to have many smaller goals that are required to reach that goal, such as like going to a different state, going to a couple different states um, that are individual like successes. And each time you have success, it makes you more hungry for more success. So that's why there's so many successful people like Elon Musk, um, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, um, like when they were working on what they're doing and many of them still are, um, there's always that drive to keep on growing. And a lot of people are like, why don't they just retire? Like, I mean, they've already got a ton of money. They're already rich. But as an entrepreneur and just somebody who's passionate about something, you're always going to have this fire inside of you. And fire wants to keep growing. It wants to keep consuming and growing as much as it can. So if you're able to find that fire and dream big, um, that's going to really propel you. And another thing to bring up is your goals are probably going to change us in the next few years. Um, as I talked about earlier, like I was going into actual science. That was my whole entire life. I thought that's what I was going to do. And then just like in an instant, it all changed. And um, sometimes change is a good thing. And a lot of time as humans, we don't see change as a good thing because it's uncertainty about what's going to happen. 
And uh, uncertainty can be pretty challenging to deal with because uh, if you don't know what's going to happen in life, um, it, it, a lot of people want to know what your plans are. And it's okay to not know your life plan right now. I mean, you have a ton of time to figure that out. And um, lastly, you're going to regret the choice you don't make more than the ones that you do. Um, and what I mean by that is like when we made that decision with gas money, if we wanted to keep going or to end it, um, the one thing that kept eating at me was if we don't go for this goal and in your guys' case, don't go for that career or that dream job, if you don't go for that business, there's no worse feeling than not knowing what would have happened if you did. And that's one thing we don't want you guys to have is any regrets about what you do. So if you have a goal or an idea that seems way out there, like far-fetched, unattainable, but you have a little bit of passion about it and you think there's a chance it can be, become successful, you got to go for it. Like you got to take action on that thing. And um, just to kind of wrap it up, like one last story I wanted to tell, kind of going back to mindset and manifestation is um, a story about a painter. And this comes from a book called The Secret. It's basically about uh, manifestation and um, attracting positive things in your life. And I'm not sure if you guys are into that or not, but it's definitely something to think about. So um, basically there was this painter who was depressed. Um, he didn't have many friends and he wanted to get a wife and every girl that he talked to um, didn't find any interest in him. And basically he went and saw a therapist and the therapist was asking him, well, like, what do you paint? And all of his paintings were women turning away from him and dark and cold, with, um, sad, sad colors. And basically the therapist told this painter, well, it's no wonder you're not getting any girls. All of the pictures that you paint are women looking away from you. So what the therapist did is he told him to change his paintings to the woman that he wants, the house that he wants, the car that he wants. And this painter started doing these paintings. And within a year, he had a dream wife that he met. Um, the wife loved him. He found happiness in life. He started becoming successful. And really, all it was is him changing his mindset and learning what he wanted to do. So for you guys, that woman could be a business idea, a goal in your life, anything that you want to accomplish. Start writing down goals. Start, if you're an artist, start drawing pictures of what you want. And uh, one thing that we do is we have like vision boards. So we have like the cars that we want one day, the houses. And even though we're not going to get those soon, like there's a chance that we could obviously, but just working towards those goals and actually picturing what you want to get out of life actually helps you so much and actually accomplishing those goals and eventually reaching those goals. So uh, I think that's a good closer. And just to kind of wrap it up, um, those are the lessons we talked about. The first step in anything is believing that you can do it. And uh, just to kind of like offer a little uh, bit of more explanation for these pictures, that was in high school, uh, a little bit before we made Gas Money LLC. We had all of our friends wear gas money shirts to school, and that was kind of like really inspirational in terms of business because it showed us people actually really believed in it, um, people supported it. And then a couple of years later, we got our first news article, um, which is, I think it was the Davidson Index, so pretty small, but still it felt really it good just to see ourselves. Genesee. Yeah, Genesee County View. But um, it still felt really good just to see ourselves in a news article, and then that made us hungry to get more articles and grow some more. And then finally at the bottom, um, that's a pitch competition that we did. Um, we came in second place, but we still won money from it. And that was just an awesome opportunity because we made so many connections. Um, we got a ton of clients from it. And just seeing people have interest in our company really propelled us to be more hungry for success and keep doing what we're doing. And if you guys could take anything from this presentation, like any idea that you have is in reach. Like you can accomplish that. You just got to go for it and believe deep down that you can accomplish it and um, really have that passion for it. So and stay consistent. You know, if you go for something, I mean, you already jumped in. Why not keep swimming? Um, or a lot of times we say, uh, you know, entrepreneurship is kind of do or die. You have that do or die mentality um, where if you don't make that next step, step, if you don't make that next move or that next connection, you know, you never know what tomorrow is going to hold because you are in complete control of of your destiny, of your future. So don't be you know, once once you're not afraid to jump in. Please don't be afraid to keep going. You got to stay consistent and stay persistent um, because you're going to have a lot of controversy. You're going to have a lot of people that, you know, will tell you that's not a good idea or that's not going to work. Like, what are you thinking? Why are you putting so much time into this? You just have to have that clear vision. Like I said about Albert Einstein, about everything that he did in his life. He had a clear vision that not a lot of people saw, but he saw it. And you just have to stick with it. Keep going and uh, you'll make it happen. Shit just takes time. So. Yeah, and then um, we're going to open up a Q&A. I'm not sure how much time we have. Um, we'll just try and squeeze in as many questions as we can. And um, like we said, we got business cards on the way out. If you scan that, that's uh, if you want to learn more about gas money, it'll bring you to our website. 
And then uh, also, if you guys wanted to like come up and ask us questions or anything, that's fine too. Um, but I guess to open it up, does anybody have any questions? No questions. Okay. Actually, one. <laughs> yeah, because these questions are going to come around. Okay. When you started building your app, like what was what did you need financially? Like how did you get into that that portion of your? I mean, I know that that was whole and. Um, I'll let you that first. Yeah, so uh, app development isn't cheap. It was around 25 grand for us to make our MVP, which is basically the uh, minimum viable product, which is the first launch of an app. And like $25,000 is a lot of money, especially at a young age. And basically what we did is we had um, a couple of years of experience uh, with revenue streams from when we were working beforehand. So we used half of that money, or we had enough money to pay the down payment, which was half of 25 grand. And then afterwards, like we are basically like our drive elevated that much more because we had to make enough revenue to continue paying for the app development payments. And luckily we were able to do so. So the first version we paid for totally on our own. Um, it was just money from ourselves, money we put back into the company. And um, after that, it really just comes down to owning a software business. You got to make sure um, your revenue is enough to pay for the app. And sometimes it's okay to take out a little bit of money. Um, from a loan or investors and um, use that money to figure out a plan to start generating revenue to pay for itself. Okay. Kind of How do you guys make profits on your app? Is it a free app? Did you pay for it? Yep. So what it comes down to, our current business model uh, is a commission from every completed job. So uh, just to explain a little bit more, um, all the, the the actual workers, they sign up as an independent contractor. So essentially you're a, you're a business owner at that point. You can choose which jobs you want to do, uh, choose how much you make from each job. You can choose all your rates, um, you know, how you complete the job and what jobs that are, or when you do those jobs as well. So you basically have the entirety of the freedom of a business owner. And what that comes back to is our current business model um, might not sound like the best. You know, it sounds like we're reaching out of the pocket every single job. Um, but we also do, we use all that money basically to pay for general liability workers' compensation insurance for all the contractors because at a young age, you know, our niche is 16 to 24 year olds uh, to do this work. So a lot of times you don't really know how to get that kind of insurance or the right coverage or if you're overpaying or underpaying. So that's a huge thing. Um, we also do all the marketing and we get all the clients for all the contractors. So that's kind of our biggest, um, you know, promotion with that. But what we want to do is uh, referencing the presentation that sometimes your goals and your trajectory changes. And we're, we're trying to also figure out how we can get into the SaaS industry with a subscription based product um, and potentially offer a subscription compared to the commission for each job. So that let's say a contractor, uh, you know, spends a certain amount of money per month on a gas money subscription. If they make, the amount of money over, you know, in payback that subscription payment, then the rest is profit. So everybody wins and, you know, everybody can use our platform in that way as well. So, and that just goes back to business and uh, the mindset you have to have that change can happen. Yeah, and I'm not sure if you covered it, but basically we take 15% from each job that's completed. So mm -hmm. if you do a job for like 30 bucks, we'll keep four or $5. And uh, like Austin mentioned that, so we can pay for your insurance, um, keep developing the app. And we actually originally started out with this same model before we had the app. So we'd have our friends work for us. We take we took 24% at the time, which looking back was like a lot of money to be taking from these workers. And um, basically, like as we grew, we found ways to decrease the commission that we take completed completed jobs down to 15%. And to make up for that, we launched a merch company. So it's called Gas Money Gear. And I'm sure I think um, Ms. Poppin was saying some of you have like apparel companies of your own or are interested in apparel. And it's been so fun kind of having the dual sided business model where we're gener generating revenue from jobs that are completed, but also taking uh, money from sales of shirts and merch and hoodies because it helps bring down the cost of our contractors, um, well, the, the revenue that we take from them so they can earn more. And it also helps get the word out while also making money from the merchandise. So it's kind of like people paying to advertise for you. Um, so merchandise is also another great way to make money. And I thought your hand back and I'll get you after. Um, so for, we have two markets basically, like clients and contractors. So we have to look at them in two separate um, ideals basically. So for the contractors, a big part of it's social media. Um, also these speeches. I know we focus a lot on lessons and stuff, but obviously like we're exposing our company. So if 
you guys wanted to sign up or any school we go to, um, we're trying to kind of gain interest in gas money and also just get feedback. So social media is a big thing for contractors. TikTok, if you have a company, is very easy to become viral on for free, basically free marketing. We also pay for like some social media ads on Facebook and Instagram. And then clients, we found they really like that face-to-face -face connection. So we do Facebook ads, but we also I have door knocked before. Um, we're working on a referral program right now where our contractors can go out and door knock for us and then generate revenue based on the clients that they gain for us. And um, if you guys are interested in that, that's also on the link if you wanted to sign up and get more information. Um, and at the end of the day, we have that dual market strategy. I don't know if you had any more to add, yeah, but um, yeah. it's kind of interesting just working with the clients who are generally like uh, 40 to 60 years old and then the contractors are young. So you gotta understand both markets. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And what's cool, um, I guess not necessarily cool taxes suck, but, uh, what we do is, uh, like I said, they sign up as an independent contractor. So the threshold, and I believe that's nationwide, but all we really know right now, cause our, all of our services are done in the state of Michigan. So the state of Michigan, um, says that an independent contractor, if they make, over $599 or $600, whatever you want to call it, from uh, a company or doing a service, then you have to start paying taxes after that threshold. And so what we do is um, we have a lot of suggestions, you know, save as much money as you can because you don't want to get bit in, you know, in the ass at the end of the year when you get your tax bill and, you know, you, you already spent all that money. So we give a lot of that education out. And, um, but yeah, I guess if that answers your question, uh, contractors have to pay taxes after they make six six hundred. Yeah. Yeah. So we've had about like five or six hundred contractor accounts, and it's funny because about four hundred of those came in through one viral TikTok. But the thing that sucks is um, our service area is still pretty small. Like we're in Michigan, like you can work anywhere in Michigan, but we have to kind of expand gradually with the marketing and everything. So. Um, if a contractor signed up in like the UP, we're not going to have clients ready for them because we're still focused on Genesee County, Oakland County, Lapeer, et cetera. Um, so right now, active contractors, it's only about like 10 to 15. Um, this past year, we basically just worked on building our foundation, um, working on a version two and kind of speaking with investors instead of actually marketing and stuff. Um, so as we go into 2023, our plan is kind of to um, use that foundation that we built this year to actually start going hard, uh, marketing, getting people to download the app. And um, that's another thing, too, is like sometimes it can be discouraging because we don't really have many people working right now. Um, and people that's like what people see is how many people are on the app and how many people are working. But deep down, like we think we've been doing it right because we've been building that foundation with the podcast, merch, um, working on the company, getting investors. So. That's another thing, just like if any of you have an idea for an app or something, um, it's okay if you don't have downloads at first, like as long as you believe in that vision, um, just kind of build that foundation and we'll keep on growing from there. Uh -oh. Are you good? Are you good? Anybody else? Why are you limited to the Michigan? Yes. I know why, but right. yep. it's more so, hurdles that you come up with and why you are kind of limited. Yep. They and like I, uh, basically said um we offer the all the contractors insurance um so they're covered you know if you screw up on a job then you don't have to pay for it out of pocket or you know have legal trouble with the client and so we we cover them with general liability and workers compensation and i guess it might not have been the smartest choice for us to do from the beginning we basically just got a statewide insurance uh coverage plan and we went with companies that only offer insurance in the state of michigan but now um, our future, since we want to start to expand to different states, uh, we're working now with our insurance agent to find different companies that we can work with that are nationwide and we can get nationwide coverage. Now you guys are paying for nation, not nationwide, statewide insurance. I'm assuming yeah. there's a lot. It's, yeah, and it comes down to in your business, you have to figure out what your all your costs are, you know, cost per contractor, uh, potentially a cost per client because. I would say some of the app costs would be a cost for users, you know, all those things. And a lot of times it, it is pretty expensive. I mean, and what we're trying to figure out, because we're still learning along the way. I'm 21, he's 20, you know, we're only a few years older than you guys. And we're still trying to learn how to find the right company, the right insurance company that really understands us. And as we grow, you know, obviously you pay more, but 
Um, yeah, I mean, to give a rough estimate, you're looking at, for a company like this that wants to have a large blanket policy, you're looking at at least 500 plus a month um, just for insurance. Just for, yeah. And the cool thing with us, though, is the more we scale, the cheaper it'll become per contractor. So um, like it's like that 500 a month right now for, I think we're covered for like 40. Um, that's the minimum that they make you pay. But as we get more contractors, like the margins per contractor will be, will actually be paying less per contractor just because of the benefits of scale. And that's one of the reasons we insure contractors, because if you wanted insurance on your own, um, it would be more expensive probably like than the commission that we take from the jobs you do. So as we scale, our margins will hopefully go up. And that's what we've projected with our models and everything, um, just because of how insurance works. And then um, I'll get him and then you again. Nope, I'm I'm in Michigan. I'm in uh, Lapeer, so you can go first. Yeah, so um, definitely with COVID, I'm sure you guys experienced this too. Um, it actually happened during my senior year, but like everything going online at first, it was a pretty hard change to adapt to, but it actually helped a lot in learning to run a business virtually because um, basically Austin's able to oversee the contractors, make sure everything's going good here. And I'm almost, I'm not out of the loop, but like I have to rely on calls with him to make sure the business is going good. I look at the analytics of the app and everything. And um, one thing that we do as business partners is we have like one or two meetings a week minimum just to make sure we stay on track. We'll dedicate like two or three hours to have a meeting. And then we also have a Google calendar, um, which I don't know if you guys use calendars at all. Uh, we just started doing that recently, but like calendars, especially when you're working with somebody who might not be like in person is a great way to keep yourself accountable. And um, basically Google Calendar lets you put tasks on there. So like once you finish something, like say it's like making an ad or doing a post or something, you can check it off and then like it crosses it off. And that's been something too that's helped us keep each other going as uh, kind of being like that long distance thing. Sometimes it can be easy for one of us to get involved in stuff. Like um, for me with Florida State, I have my classes. I have different clubs I go to. And then Austin being here um, has been working and doing jobs on his own and then going to networking events. So um, just kind of staying connected with the calendar and doing the meetings has helped a lot and uh, keeping us on track. And then do you still have the question? Okay, so now you gotta like, think about it nationwide. You're talking about how, like, how, how much your expenses are gonna be and how, how those expenses are nationwide. Yeah, that's um. We haven't looked into that yet. We've mostly just stayed at the state level because, um, kind of what the investors right now, um, are preparing pitch decks and everything. Like they want to see kind of like the immediate results first, and then over time, like we'll work on the uh, larger projections later on. So, uh, I'm trying to think of like cost per contractor. I think one of our models is like it was like thirty or forty bucks per contractor a month and that's like with insurance uh, marketing everything and that's like as we grow some more um kind of in the state of michigan and basically like austin was saying with the subscription model um we either have to make sure we can cover that with the subscription or with the commission so just kind of a lot of research that goes into it but thank you guys thanks for, for listening yeah <laughs>